Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at finding the centre of a triangle. Now that turns out to be a bit more complicated than you might imagine, so we're going to start with something a little bit easier, which is the centre of the rectangle. And so that we'll develop the ideas here and then we'll transfer them back to the triangle. And so to find the centre of a rectangle, all we would need to do is to find the midpoints and to join them up. So if we were to mark on the midpoints with a ruler, say, then we could join them with lines like that and the point where the lines intersect would be the centre of the rectangle. Now that's pretty simple and straightforward but there's even a simpler way to do it and that is to join the diagonals of the rectangle. So if we took a pair of corners and we joined them and then we joined up the opposite pair as well then the point where the, those diagonals cross in the middle there is the centre of the rectangle and if we superimpose that back on the original copy we can see that both of those methods are find the same point as the centre. So although the, both of those are pretty simple and straightforward let's just make a note of the techniques we've used. So we've used the idea or the strategy of finding the midpoint of each of the sides and we've joined up the midpoints at lines at right angles to the side that they were on. And we've also, in the second diagram, we've joined up the opposite corners, or we could call the corners the vertices, are their proper name really, so we've joined the vertices. So these are the three sort of elements we've been using as our strategies to join the midpoints, the vertices, and to use lines at right angles to the side that we're on. So let's have a go at applying those techniques to the triangle. And so the first thing we might do is to mark on the midpoints of the triangle as well, which we could do with the ruler, and then to join those up. So that was the first idea we had with the rectangles, was to join the midpoints. So let's try that with the triangle. If we do that, then we see, of course, that that's not all that helpful in that we've only generated another triangle. We haven't actually found the midpoint. It's an interesting sort of pattern, and it is a smaller triangle, but we haven't found the centre of the triangle by doing that, so let's just erase that. But we might try a variation on the technique, and that's to combine the midpoint and the vertices. So in this technique, we'll take two of those ideas that we had and we'll combine them to join the vertex to the midpoint that's opposite it, or if we start with the midpoint to go to the opposite vertex over there. And if we do that, we find those lines that we've made all do coincide at a common point. Now it turns out, though, that we can find other points of intersection by using other combinations of these strategies, as we'll see. So if we give ourselves a copy of this triangle and we apply some other techniques here, so this time we'll start with the midpoints again, but we'll use the idea of the right angle to the side that we're on. So if we do that here, we're just making a right angle line off the base that we're on. And if we do that for each of the three sides, if I was doing this with a pen and paper, I would need a protractor or a set square. But if we do that, we find another point of intersection. And so with triangles, the center that we get depends on the technique that we've used in finding it. And there's a third way that we could find a triangle center, which is to use the remaining pair of strategies there, which is to join the vertices with the opposite side with a right angle. So if we just join, say, this vertex with the side opposite it in such a way as to make a right angle as we get there, and we do that for each of the vertices like this, and again, we'd need a protractor to do this by hand, we can see that, again, those lines have made a point of intersection. And again, it's a different point to the first two. And there's actually different names for these centers. So let's um, have a look what they're called. This little diamond that's beneath the blue is the centroid. It's formed by joining the midpoints to the opposite vertex. This one here is the circumcenter. It was formed with this method, with the right angles and the midpoints. And the third triangle center was the orthocenter, which was formed by drawing the right angle line from each vertex to the other side. So but each of these techniques is in some ways quite similar, and yet they generate different triangle centers. So in the next video, we'll be having a look at all three of these triangle centers and some interesting properties we can look at when you look at all three of them together.